Hello again, back in the workshop with the Range Rover this week because the True Carrier is having a, its wrap done. And then, in the workshop today, I get news of my dashboard. Poor old thing. I decide something important. And it'll look like a real hack job. But it'll work. And I play with a bit of rubber. I've had a couple of thoughts about the Range Rover. I've been working on it. Um, this is the rubber seal, door seal, that actually connects under there. It's completely broken and, well, almost useless. Uh, and I've ordered one from the UK. Fit perfectly. However, my old one didn't work very well. So I could put it on there and it'll make a bit of a difference, but it, w it won't do a particularly good job. What I have done in the meantime is I have cleaned up all of this and taken these off and given them, them a uh, coat of paint. There are two of them, left and right. See, aren't they nice? Yeah, all ready to go back on. But I'm thinking to myself, should I, should I put them on now? Because the, the, the canning is going to be is tough on any vehicle. And it's going to be particularly tough on a really old vehicle. So whatever I put on the vehicle now is going to, some of it's going to be need, to, need to be redone after the track, after that, you know, uh, the, the wear and tear of the canning stock route. And I was thinking to myself, should I not, instead of replacing the seal here with something that is you know the replacement seal which is kind of going to work or should I actually do something else like this that is a proper closed cell rubber foam all right and imagine if I actually put that on there all the way along I bet that that and I might even add a you see this is temporary I might even put another piece down there or a flatter, that's right, a flatter lap. What I'm saying is that instead of, for the trip, replacing it with genuine parts, just make it work. Make the back seal well for the trip. And then when I get back, take off all of these temporary things, which will probably get damaged as one puts things in and out of the back take them off and then replace them then with the uh, new stuff and you know, make it original. I can make it better with this than I can original. And I thought, yes, I'm going to do that, which made me think. My mate Richard from Church House Classics this week Hello. Uh, has found me a dashboard. Today? I'm at Tim Hammond's farm, a centre of operations for all these Range Rover parts. And he's going to be stripping it out of a, and I think it's a Suffolk D as well, Range Rover in the UK. We're going to tear this thing apart. He says the dash is in really good nick. It's a bit far gone, I'll walk you around it. So he's going to be taking that out for me and sending it to me. Dash top is, um, is reserved, that's going to Australia, uh, to Mr. Uh, Andrew St. Pierre White a 4 by overland um, to replace his utterly destroyed Australian one. I'm going to have to give it a damn good clean before it goes in the post to Australia because I know they're a bit um, fussy about cross-contamination and so forth. And I was going to strip this dashboard out before the track so I can get the fan working properly. And then I thought, hang on a minute, same thing applies with the dashboard. Surely I should leave the old dash in. Yeah, I can't fix the fan properly without removing the dash. Well, the fan in its standard form is not very effective. Why don't I just get a, a fan like a Sirocco or something like a decent fan, wire it up to the electrics and actually have a really good fan in the vehicle as opposed to a lackluster fan, which is the original fan. And then, even if I bolt it directly to the dashboard now, it doesn't matter, the dash is going to come out and a new one's going to be put in. And then any wear and tear on the dashboard doesn't matter during the trip 
because I'm replacing it. Day two, I'm going to break this one up. I'll give you a quick walk round. Let me, though, introduce you to Richard Hudson from Buckinghamshire. His YouTube channel is called Church House Classics. Richard's father is Jonathan, owner of Diana, the suffix A that I drove back in 2016 in Wales. So the dash is good. Um, it's got a pull switch there rather than the choke. It is a... When did they bring the choke up here? 74, 75? Um, so that the choke could go through that hole, it would work. Um, and then the rest of it, I think, is going to be good for him. Jonathan is helping me with finding parts for my Range Rover. I once commented on one of Richard's videos that watching him work in his workshop was like watching fish in a fish tank, but with swearing. I'm thinking this is what I actually need to do. I need to forget about the restoration and refurbishment of the vehicle, apart from the gearbox. Now, I need to get it mechanically good, yes. But cosmetically and the other bits and pieces, functional. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, all sorts of treasure in here, like the sidey slidey channels and so forth, and bits of dash and all manner of stuff. So I'm going to strip it down and I will come back to you with a pile of treasure. We've been trying to guess throughout the project what the age of the vehicle was. It kind of come up with about 1976, 76, 77, we think. Good day's work. But if I'm not going to repair the fan, I need to fit a fan. And I actually think I've got a couple that I can try. See, the idea is basically to take a fan <clears throat> and mount it in this space here. It's strong enough. It, it's not very well secured, but it's strong enough. Now, this is a Sirocco fan. I don't know if those of you who have seen these. These are absolutely brilliant fans for campers and things. Uh, they're a bit pricey, and I actually bought this for the troop carrier. But I think it's too big for here. I, it's going to hit... It's going to hit the windscreen and that's not going to work so all right i have to go and buy myself maybe just a really inexpensive fan that i that i bolt onto there actually this here is uh wired up to this battery and there's a switch and i actually made this myself uh well this part the controller there's the switch I've got a, a rear stat there, and I can turn it up. That'll work. I can just mount that, make a little mount for the dashboard. I'm going to have to make a mount in there so that that sits like that. And then I'll screw that onto the dashboard there. And it'll look like a real hack job, but it'll work. So what I did is I ran the breakout box that I actually used on my Trans Australia trip. I will add a USB charger to that. Uh, ran a new cable from the battery, fused it at the battery, and ta-da! I mounted that. What do you think of that? And it's got the little... I'll attach that to the bonnet somewhere. And it works like that. I admit, I admit it, <laughs> it looks ridiculous, yes, but it'll do the job, and then I don't have to rip out the dashboard and put in the new one. So there you go, this car is getting cooler and cooler, and not in the cool, cool as in cool, not cool, no, no, it's not, it's not getting cool at all. So if I put it just a little test piece of foam here, hard up against the edge. Okay, I've cleaned this all up, all right, up there, and let's see if that works. That's brilliant. I reckon, I reckon that if I put a, a broad, I don't have any here, piece of similar kind of closed cell foam and run it along the top of the tailgate, all the way along I will get a really good seal and I can do something similar down here because it's this part here 
that runs along this rubber here and this rubber here is very tired I've ordered that but I'm thinking well sh actually if I run a thin piece all the way up I think I've got some so I think this is going to be I can, then I can take more time over the refurbishment there are quite a few um, Range Rover classic fanatics that dote over their Range Rovers guys understand where you're coming from who might be saying oh Andrew no you've got to do it properly you've got to do it properly yeah I will do it properly this has got to do a job okay a very specific job um, and um, as I say what I'm doing now temporary it is temporary it's got to seal this back window I've got to stop dust and I've got to stop carbon monoxide affecting the driver but let's have a look you see to the to me that's actually not bad at all and there you go off cut perfect for a spare put into the spares box I can test the effectiveness of what I've done um, this week because um, the range is going to have its windows tinted as I said before it's like driving a greenhouse it gets incredibly hot inside so um, and the biggest problem is yeah dust is the problem you, you can live with dust but you cannot live with uh, the carbon monoxide that comes out of this exhaust pipe of course there's no catalytic converter or anything like that to clean it up it's just disgusting it stinks and it's poisonous so let's try that now what worries me is that there's not enough clearance and i really battled to open the tailgate once i've closed it but anyway that's all the way there all the way there and all the way across what i'm going to try and do is close it like this and see what happens now this side is not going to close oh that's that's fine so it's obviously the clearance here that's the issue there you go no movement at all no that's 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 going to be fantastic over the corrugations it's, Canning has got some really tough corrugations with it when everything just gets shaken to pieces uh, and if you can stop something moving you stop it breaking so let's try now and open it okay this is what I was scared of okay not bad not bad a little bit of oil a little bit of oil sprayed in those two and I think we're good now the bottom is uh, exactly the same problem I could quite easily put some flat uh, foam around here around here and same on that side and it'll make a big difference but here not so easy This rubber mat here is original, but it's it's in terrible shape. Um, it's certainly not repairable, so I might I might toss it. Well, in here is ordinary foam. Did the manufacturers put that in there. It's a terrible idea. This, it gets wet. No, this is not from the manufacturing. This is this is an aftermarket. Yeah, this is not. It's been done very badly. And you 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 know when you use foam in a vehicle and anything, always use closed cell foam. Otherwise, you know it gets a bit of moisture. It stays in the foam and just rots everything around it. Um, this is a. Yeah. I have just had the uh, windows tinted in the Range Rover. It's given it quite an odd look actually. It looks a bit like 
a modern edge to an old vehicle because um, it is like a greenhouse in here when driving it so uh, in order to um, try and keep the interior internal temperatures down I put on a window tint it's a week or so later uh, the um, seals that I put in the back of the tailgate work brilliantly major major difference so that's really good news the next thing I need to do is try and make this seat a bit more comfortable it has been partially restored by the previous owner but they did it on the cheap they didn't actually invest a decent amount of money and effort into getting it right it's sort of okay and the problem is when sitting in this seat the seat belt which is actually attached in the seats an unusual design the uh, inertia reel seat belt always tugs here it's a constant constant you're being pulled into the seat so normally on a normal car it's here so it does that here it actually grabs me and I actually drive like this which is not safe if there was a sudden incident uh, that's not a good place to have a seat belt so I have to do something about the seat to stop this constant and I imagine on the slow tracks you don't have to wear a seat belt all the time if the, dri if the dri driver's at 20 30 kilometers an hour on a remote track you don't really have to wear a seat belt I don't see any any uh, real value in it this is my opinion it's just my opinion okay um, but then a lot of this there's a fair amount of driving on the car road a fair amount of gravel road driving as well where the speeds are you know 40 50 60 you gotta wear a seatbelt and put up with this so what do I do I'm gonna take the seat out and try and actually this is a little broken the, that's a little broken I'm gonna try and finish the job I think they started so here are the wheel rims now the Range Rover purists amongst you you have to forgive me for this because I am too a Range Rover purist however as I mentioned the wheel rims are not going to do the job so I have bought those and I didn't pay very much for them they are incredibly light I mean really light and of course they are genuine Range Rover Vogue LSE tubeless rims and we will be putting those on the car but I have no idea if this, at this point if the standard wheel nuts will work I have a feeling that they won't work so I'm gonna to have to go and find out what ones will work but at least I not few people suggested that I go and buy some of these awful white steel things oh dear oh dear anyway that's I think okay because they are genuine Range Rover rims <laughs>